I want you to turn with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, starting at verse 12. I want to pick up where we left off on last Sunday. And we're talking, I want you to really get this in your spirit. We're talking about what happened after the cross. Just, just, just tell somebody that. Just, just tell about two people that. Just, just say we're talking about what happened after the cross. Get that in your spirit. So important. So important. So important. So next week you'll remember that when I ask you. Because we're going to be here for just a little while. But what happened after the cross. And we're talking about this because most people are stuck at Easter. And we started this series the Sunday or the week after Easter. Because everybody come to church on Easter. And there's a tendency that... People get stuck, and that's why the Lord said we should never favor one day above another day. So our whole focus is on what happened after Easter, and we started in Acts chapter 1, because after Easter, Jesus stayed on earth, how many days? 40 days. 40 days. Many people don't know that, and if you don't know that, it just warps everything concerning your view of life of life, not just Christianity, but of life. Jesus walked around on earth 40 days after he was resurrected, 40 days without any blood in his body, 40 days without a heartbeat, 40 days without a pulse, 40 days he stayed here after resurrection. And there was a reason for it. And that's what we're talking about. So we can reap the benefits of it. So we can experience what he did and what he validated in those 40 days. So we're talking about that. The Holy Spirit came back and so on. So we've been talking about that for the last uh, couple of weeks. If you need to catch up, see the uh, CD ministry, you can catch up. But in Hebrews chapter 5, we're still in that same vein, same vein. Chapter 5, verse number 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. See that? He said you should be teaching and now you need somebody to teach you your ABCs over again. Your one, two, threes. That's what he's saying. It's elementary stuff. The lack of maturity. He says for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. That means that mean we we've, 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 we've exercised our senses, we've exercised, we've, we've gained strength. It's like lifting weights, but the senses he's talking about is, is more spiritual. And he's saying to us that we are able to determine what's good and what's evil. Chapter 6, verse 1. This flows all together. Therefore, leave in a discussion of the elementary principles of Christ. Let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Of the doctrine of baptism, of laying on the hands, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. Now, you have to think about this just a second as we review. Think about it. God, he says, I want to go past land on the hands. He's not saying doing away with it. But he said, let us pass land on the hands, healing the sick, resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment, heaven and hell. And all of this is important. He's not saying that we do away with this. What he said is we need to progress. You go to the first grade, you learn certain things, or you don't want to get stuck in the first grade. But there are many people that are stuck in life on an elementary level. And they will pull you into a conversation that is very, very elementary. What do you mean? It's very fleshly. It's very carnal. They're talking about stuff that is superficial, and it's all going to pass away. 
because we're all going to die. Live a hundred years, but we are all going to leave here one day. All right? So he said, let's get into, let's get into a real conversation. So what, what, what is it that, that he wants to talk about? He don't want to talk about repentance and, and faith and all of that. And that's great. And he's, he's saying that we need that, but it's foundation. We've got to build on it. Verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. So when you feel the Spirit of God, you actually have felt what heaven is going to be like. You've got a small glimpse, the quickening power, supernatural power living inside of you. You say we've got a small glimpse of what it's going to be like. He says in verse 6, if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. Now, I want to really focus on, I want to focus on that before we go a little further. This is what we talked about last week. He says we crucify Jesus again. So what is he saying? He wants us to go past. He said, now we need to get past talking about land on the hand. God is a healer. God is a deliverer. You should know that now. You should be being, a, being healed and delivered. What do you want to talk about? What's past that? Relationship. Relationship. Relationship is everything to God. Relationship. So he says that the people that... After they've tasted of the Holy Spirit, they've been born again, they've felt the presence of God, the powers that are going to operate in heaven. He says, when we go back, we crucify Jesus again. So he's talking relationship now. When we go back, let's get to the bottom line. We, yeah, we need to pay the light bill, we need to pay the gas bill, we need to talk about all that, we need to do that. But eventually we need to get to talk about, do you love me? And how much you love me. And what love is all about. We need to have those conversations. So he says when you go back. Now listen to me. I know as many. I, 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 know, I know some of you. You're trying not to hear. But you need to hear that, that. That sin is always personal. It's not against the pastor. It's not against the church. Sin is always against God. You cannot sin against man. You sin against God. Relationship. You hurt people but you sin against God. And all sin is personal. So, he says, if you sin, it's like crucifying Jesus all over again. Now, we would say, we would say, how is that possible? Jesus died about 2,000 years ago. We're living in the year 2013. How is that possible? Well, when we sin today, Jesus felt that pain on the cross. Because he not only died for our present sins, he died for our future sins, past sins. So all sin was felt by him. So whenever we sin, when we go back, we transgress. It's like nailing him on a cross all over again. Because to him, all it is about is relationship. This is, this is the weakness. This is the greatest weakness that we have, I believe, in the human family. It's that most of us do not understand relationships. Because we don't understand what love is all about. Relationship. And all God is looking for and what he wanted was somebody to just be a friend to him. Adam and Eve just wanted a friend. That's what God wants. He calls us a friend. Now, if you don't get that, church will just be a building to you. It'll be just something we do on Sundays. But whenever you see him as a friend, and he's a friend to us, and he wants us to be a friend to him, and it's a personal relationship, we'll never get where we're trying to go if we don't see that. I want you to, I want you to go to uh, St. John, St. John chapter 21. I'm going to move further. God has something to say to us. Just study with us today. St. John chapter 21. Verse 
relationship. Oh, what a weakness. What a weakness. What a weakness we have. St. John chapter 21, starting in verse 13. Now, everything is focused on, focusing on what happened after the resurrection. It is so much information. Basically, what happened after the, uh, the resurrection starts, Acts chapter 1, and really ends in Revelation. All right? Watch this. St. John chapter 21, verse 13. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Oh, focus. This is the focus that you're going to see throughout scriptures past the resurrection. So this is, this is during those 40 days he was on earth. He's trying to make sure that everything was right for us. So the third time he came to the disciples because uh, they had gone back fishing. Some of us here today, we have gone back fishing. We have gone back into what he brought us out of. And the Bible says that how can we return to the vomit? If it made us sick one time, it's going to make you even sicker the next time. So they had gone back. Jesus shows himself to them after the resurrection. Verse 15 says, so when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Now we're going to get to it. Tell somebody, so we're getting ready to get to it. Now Jesus says to Simon, do you love me? I told you that's all he wanted. I told you if you start in Genesis, all you see God is looking for a relationship beyond what the angels can give him. Because it's not a relationship unless you can say no. Unless you have the choice to, to love me or to hate me. It's not a relationship. I'm just a puppet on the string. But when you can, when you can refuse me, so when God created Adam and Eve, he created them in such a way that they could, they could accept him or refuse him. That's the greatness of God because none of us can make anything to a point where we don't program it to say something. But God created a creature and gave that creature choice. And after God had formed him and placed him in Eden and given him everything, perfect climate, perfect weather, perfect help after he had given him everything he steps back and say do you love me <laughs> See, because things won't make people love you some of us has learned that the hard way but it won't make folks love you God is looking for a lover he's looking for a friend so here he says to Simon Simon do you love me now watch, watch this. Now this is key. You got to pay attention to this. This is real key. Focus now. Focus now. Verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verse 17. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, loveth thou me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Now, there's a, there's a situation here. Peter had just denied him before the resurrection. All right? He, he had denied him three times. All right? So now the Lord comes to him. Now, now I'm sure Peter's mind is in one place. God is somewhere else. When God forgives us, he moves from that. If so many of us are stuck trying to forgive ourselves because we don't understand the heart of God. He asked him three times. Why ask, why ask him three times the same question? 
Because now you know he's omniscient. You know he already knew the answer. Because you, you read the next verse, he's going to tell you he knew the answer. Do you love me? You know, when, 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 when you love somebody and you, you, you love hearing them say, I love you. Huh? Oh, did I lose you on that? You know, do, do, sometimes I ask my wife, do you love me? She might say, she might say, yeah, I said, I said, tell me. Tell me. Say it. Say it. Say it. Absolutely. Y'all don't care on like that in your homes. That's why y'all got so many problems. Need to hear it. But watch this now. Every time Jesus said, do you love me? Peter said, yes. Now, this is where study comes in. Jesus is saying, do you love me? Peter said, I love you. Now, in original language, and really this is not a good translation, in original language, it's a different word. Now, let me show you what, what is really happening. And, and I'll bring it down a little lower. I'll bring it down. Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, I'm fond of you. I like you. That's the Greek word here. Jesus' word is agape. So you can look in, and that's not hard to do. Just look in a dictionary. You can look this up. It's real easy to do. Jesus said, now, do you agape me? Peter said, well, Lord, I like you. He's using, it, 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 it's so strange when you sit, look at this, because Peter is using a different word. Jesus is asking him, do you love me? He's, I'm fond of you. You can be fond of a person, you can like a person, and love is on a whole other level, especially agape. Peter, do you agape me? Peter said, I phileo you. <laughs> i got brotherly love for you. i got kindness towards you. Jesus asked him again. Peter, do you agape me? He said, Lord, I, I phileo you. So Jesus comes down the third time when Jesus asked him, he said, Peter, do you like me? <laughs> he comes down to where he is so he can grow from that. you got to see that. What he's looking for is a relationship. He goes on to tell Peter, oh, you love me because you're going to be crucified. You're going to die for me. All right? But he's trying to get Peter to understand relationship. One of the most difficult jobs I have as a pastor, the most difficult job I've ever had in my life, is trying to convey to people that you love them. Because most people don't understand what love is about. You cannot love a person and watch them walk off a cliff without saying something. You can't agree with them when they're wrong, knowing it's going to destroy them. Love will not do that. The Bible says that whom the Lord loveth, he, he chastises, he corrects. If you're hanging around anybody that never corrects you, they don't know what love is. Love just don't agree. I think I'll jump off this cliff. Sound like a good idea to me, man. I think I'll jump with you. See, love don't do that. And it's hard to show a person that, that when you differ from them, when you correct them, when you don't agree with them, that's one of the strongest forms of love. Well, you got to confront them. Hello. Now, I got, a, I got a job ahead of me this year. Some people in here I might have to confront because you're an alcoholic and you don't want to deal with it. And I'm going to confront it in love, in secret. Touch somebody and say, he's coming. Now, now there's, there's, there's some that you're, you're engaged in the wrong type of behavior, sexual behavior. You are very promiscuous. And, and, and I hesitate to come because you're going to lie. Now, when you lie to me, you lie to God. Because I'm nothing more than just dirt. And sometimes you're afraid to confront people because if they lie, basically it's out of your hands. Huh? Some are addicted to pornography. 
Love confronts that and says, this is destroying you, your family, the inside of you. This is destroying your life. Love confronts it. It confronts it. Why? Because it wants to help. Because love won't sit around and watch you destroy you, your family, your children, and everything around you without saying something. We're, we're not used to that. That's, that's my greatest struggle. I mean, you can, you can, you know, if you don't know about now, after 23 years, most of y'all have been here for a long time. If you don't know about now, ain't no, ain't no sense of me trying to prove, ain't prove my love for you. I, I should be over with. But we don't understand what love is all about. 2 Samuel chapter 13. First four verses. This is, one of these, these, this is one of those CDs that you buy and you give to somebody else. Or you get them and you, 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 you get it and you, 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 know, you slip it to somebody else. You don't put your name on it. 2 Samuel chapter 13. All Jesus is looking for is a friend. Listen, when you saw him hanging on the cross, that was a picture of what a relationship is all about. That's a love picture. He loves us individually. Make, you got you to gotta make sure you understand that he is very aware of you, very conscious of you. All right? Watch this. Watch this. Ready? 2 Samuel 13, first four verses. It says, After this, Absalom, the son of David, had a lovely sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Watch that word now. See, when you, you see that word in the Hebrew, you see that word in the Greek, it, it's all different types of form of love. This is not agape. It's not even phileo. This is the lust kind of love. Yeah, this, this, this love's here. He loved her. You, you'll see in a minute. Ammon was so distressed over his sister Tamar that he became sick. For she was a virgin. And it was improper for Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimei, David's brother, first cousin. Now, Jonadab was a very crafty man, and he said to him, why are you, the king's son, becoming thinner day after day? Will you not tell me? And Amnon said to him, I love Tamar, my brother's Absalom sister. Look, this man came, this man not eating. He's losing weight. He's to the point that he's sick. He think he's love sick. And most of, most of us would say, man, he really loved her. He really in love with her. So, Jonadab, you've got to watch your friends. Watch who you're hanging out with. Sometimes you can love to hang out with the wrong person. I use that word right, love. You can love to hang out with the wrong person. You've got to get to the point where you say, we're not good for one another. You ever had to cut a friend loose? I mean, you would do good, but when you're around them, it was like gas and fire. Y'all just keep on living. Just keep on living. Just keep on living. There, there are some people... There are some people you can get around that will bring out the worst than you. It's not that they're bad people. Not that they're bad people, but just the two together, don't, it, it doesn't work. So 2 Samuel, stay right there. Uh, go down to verse number 14. So Jonadab, his friend, said, this is what you do to get her. This is how you get her. And he thought of a plan how to get, get the girl over, over in Jonadab and over in, over, over in, in Amnon apartment. He wasn't a friend. You got to understand what the Bible is saying. Everybody, you say a friend is not a friend. He didn't even, he didn't, when you read, when you read this chapter, next chapter, he didn't even love Amnon. He didn't even care about him. He knew he was getting ready to be killed and didn't say nothing. Watch this. Second Samuel, move down to verse 14. Just to expedite time. However, he would not heed her voice. Now, so now he gets her in, gets her. They trick her. She comes in. He makes up a lie. She comes in. And, and now he has her in his, his apartment. It says, however, he would not heed her voice. Being stronger than she, he forced her. He raped her. Lay with her. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. 
so that the hatred which he hated her was greater than the love with, with which he had loved her. And Amnon said to her, Arise, be gone, get out of here. Now, now this is the thing. He was losing weight. He felt like he didn't even want to live because he, so, he thought he was so in love. But as soon as he slept with her, As soon as he slept with her, the Bible said he hated her exceedingly. See, the thing about it is, you can think you're in love and not be in love. Come on, y'all. Have you ever thought you loved somebody, but you found it was like puppy love? I wish, let me go over this side. The, the, the young people over here, let me, let me see if they can help me with that. Have you ever thought you loved somebody and you found that you didn't love them? That's why you don't have more than one boyfriend. And then y'all went together a long time. Now you're talking about, I can't stand him. <laughs> he's losing weight. He's to the point he's sick, standing in the bed, because he said, I love her. As soon as he had sex with her, he hated her. You got, you got to get this. See, some relationships will work, but you have sex too early. Anytime sex comes in before marriage, the whole focus of the relationship change. It ain't, it's no more about finding out about the person and exploring the person and discovering who they really are. It's all about let's get it, let's get it together. That's why statistics says people who sleep together before they get married, their divorce rate is higher. True science is always going to validate the word of God. Now, now let me say this. Now, now, you know, I'm, I, I know there's a whole lot of y'all in here, okay? And I know that's amazing mistakes, but you've come to grace and come to understanding, and now we're working through some things, and it, it's a little more difficult because anytime you do something out of place, anytime you, put, you, you, you do something, you, you know, you put the cart before the horse, you gotta, it, it changes the whole dynamics of the relationship because now it's not it's not about finding out about you you the person not the house you live in because if i get into the house you live in if cancer does something to your house i'm out of here if an automobile accident you lose a limb or something you disfigured i'm out of here because i never had a chance to fall in love with you i fell in love with what the house you live in maybe with the hair I love you because your hair long. That ain't love. I love you because your eyes. That's not love. If anybody can tell you why they love you and it's superficial, that's not love. Oh, this feels good. So I'm at an audience today. And they probably ain't going to be able to use so much of this on television. That's all right. But, but listen, listen, because I need to get close. I need to get close. You know? After he had sex with her, he hated her. Now, watch this. Watch this. I'm over here, y'all. Y'all know where I am? I know y'all thinking, but it's all right to look at me. Look. It's going to be all right. Now, now, listen. God doesn't send a word to send you in depression. He doesn't send a word for you to start thinking about all that, was, you, know, you know. You know, some of y'all getting mad right now. He made a fool out of me. Wait till I get out of this church service. Some of y'all ready to go get him now, huh? Let's not see him again. Somebody said their boyfriend said he didn't, he didn't like he didn't like me. Said that he didn't, he always fussing and stuff and all that. And he came and said she, he don't like you. I know he don't like me. Y'all y'all sleeping together, and you know you sin. You deal deal with God. I'm just, I'm just a messenger. He hated her after he was sick with what he said was love. Come on. You know why? Because he didn't even know what love was. 
he had deceived himself. See, when a person tells you they love you, and they don't know what love is, to the best of their ability, you can put them on a lot of tests, they're going to pass it, but they don't know what love is. He said, but he gave me this and he gave me that. And he, the Bible says you can give your body to be burned. And if you don't have love, it's nothing. After he slept with her, then he realized that's all he wanted. I'm up here, y'all. Y'all can look. You, you know we talk about sex here at this church. You know that? Come on. Don't be lying to folks and stuff. You hated her. Isn't that something? You hated her. Oh, I got one more scripture. One more scripture. Wow, I could stay there for a while. Anybody learn anything? You got somebody to need this lesson? Yes, sir. Okay, good, good. Watch this. Genesis chapter 29. See, some of y'all trying not to hear. They walk around on this side of the church. Huh? It's all right, come on. What love, got to, what love got to do with it? Tell somebody everything. Yeah, yeah. And they, looking, they, looking for, they looking for the young women with... With, with, with master degrees and you smart and major in psychology. Let me tell you, you're no match for the dude on the street. He got street psychology. He looking for you. Because you ain't got no common sense. He looking for you. He's out for you. Can I say, so they don't, make sure you don't think I'm talking about just young people. It ain't no fool like them. Yeah. Once he slept with her, he hated her. That's something to think about. Something to think about, because he deceived himself. He gave me a diamond ring. He must really love me. No, that don't mean he loves you. It mean nothing. He, he deceived himself. Couldn't rest at night, losing weight, sick. I love her so much. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm about to lose my mind. As soon as he slept with her, I guess he said he got the milk. He don't need the cow anymore. Now, you know what? Listen, listen. If, 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 if some people in here, if they, and I ain't going to let them do it, but if they want to shame, they could testify. Oh, they could tell you something. This ain't no fairy tale I'm talking about. This is real. Now watch this in Genesis chapter 29, verse 32. He loves me. Loves me not. Loves me. Loves me. She loves me. She loves me not. Huh? Hello. See, when love, love, is, love is there... Love is there if you go blind. Love is there if cancer is... Love, love is there. And what you're looking for is just like what God's looking for. Somebody to love him for him. Or love her for her. That's what you're looking for. Watch this. Genesis chapter 29, verse 32. And Leah conceived and bare a son. And she called his name Reuben. For she said, for she said, surely the Lord has looked upon my affliction. Now therefore my husband, what? He a what? And why does she feel like he's on love her? Because she had a child. She got pregnant. That doesn't happen in the 21st century, does it? See, look, I'm telling you, you this, this love thing, you better find out about it. You better find out about a relationship. A person can think they love you and don't love you. They don't know what it is. Love confronts. It confronts. 
They confront and say, that's wrong. If you keep doing that, it's going to destroy you. They confront and say, you know, you, he who covers his sins will not prosper. Now, you know, see, after I came the first time, you should have said, Pastor, I'm wrong, and, and asked for forgiveness and all that. I, the first time, I'm, I was no blood on my hands. I'm done. I'm going to heaven because I told you. But to make a personal trip and challenge you, and you, then you still, you still allow, you won't change? She had a baby, and she said, oh, my husband going to love me. Oh, I got a baby. Now, now watch this. Now, how many kids did she have all together? She had seven children by him. And her, and her song was still the same. He really going to love me. She had six, six boys and one girl. She said, he really going to love me now. He can love the kids and I love you. Well, she could love the kids and not love you. She might just need you for the kids. Because she got another she on the side. And she plus she can't have no kids. And he plus he can't have no kids. And the writers of Sesame Street is alive when they said Bill got two, two fathers or two mothers. They lied. One father, one mother, biologically. But think about it. She kept saying, if I have this baby, he really going to love me. Wow, you know how many people have been disappointed over that? How many people have been broken over that? It's... You know, it's just a wonderful device, cordless mics. It lets you walk all the way to the back. Man, there was people back here that I didn't even know were still coming to church. <laughs> Make me almost want to say, what's your name? <laughs> listen, listen. That doesn't mean he loves you. Now watch this. That doesn't mean he knows. Now, some folks are a player. They're they saying stuff they know they just, they're just using you. But there are some people who are honest. They don't know that they don't love you. Charity is here. That's my youngest daughter. She's back here, too. I t Boy, I ain't going to tell you what you find in the back. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's my wonderful daughter. I saw her come in. She came in. She came in late. She drove from Conway to be here. So, amen. Amen. See, I, I tell my daughter, keep me saved. Help me to stay saved. Sometimes folks crazy. And she tell me, you know, this person did this. this, 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 this. You know, and I said, I said, I ain't going to be able to preach Sunday. <laughs> I text her back, I'm going to prison. <laughs> I like this. Y'all like me to be able to walk out there like that? I ain't hear nobody in the back say anything. Almost done. But this is my heart. This is my heart. Because most people can't they don't understand when people love them because they disagree with them or they tell them when they're wrong. They think you're against them. They think you're against them. And they'll get mad and they'll pout and they'll leave and they'll break your heart and do all of that. Oh, yeah. Because when you love somebody, they, they got the strings of your heart. And God says before anybody can pastor, you have to have the heart of God. That's no more requirement for you can pastor. You've got to have God's heart. God loves people. He gives you that type of love for people. So at the risk of losing some of, some of you. See, that's what love does. Love takes the risk. At the risk of losing you, I've got to tell you the truth. Because if I don't tell you the truth, I can still be your buddy, buddy, and friend and still see you. But you're on your way to a bad place. And a friend is not going to let you do that. Parents, keep being a friend to your children. 
You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not their big sister or big brother. Now see, see, even when I said be a friend of your parent, be, parents be a friend of your children, since we don't understand the biblical definition of friend. When we think about friend, we think about kicking it. Oh, my mom and I, we went to the, the club. Mom and dad and I, we went and we, we, we got high together. Oh, that's common now. That's common now. Yeah, that's common now. That's not love. And a person normally don't even love themselves. See, unless a person loves God, they don't know how to love themselves. The kind of love I'm talking about you can only have if you're in love with him. He teaches you how to have agape for other people. Now, there are some people that feel as though they are in love with you. I'm getting ready to do the altar call. I think I'm going to stand down here and do the altar call today. There, there are some people that, that feel like they're in love with you. And, and this is the thing that Satan is trying to do. He, he started in the book of Genesis with Adam and Eve. We see him in the book of Job. He has one objective, is to, is to turn you from the people that really love you, to separate you from the people that really love you. And that's what he said to Eve. Did God really say that? Do you know why, you know, you know why Eve was so bent on taking, eating that fruit? Because Satan made her feel like God was holding out on her. You know, God got some good stuff. He's not giving it to you. Huh? Uh, your mom and dad is just too strict. Oh, they're just too strict. Uh, I, I come in when I get ready. Ain't nothing happening after 12 o'clock at night. And the old folks said ain't nothing but one thing open after 2 o'clock at night. Some of y'all, don't, you, you, you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. And that's all right. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing happening that time of night. Don't be embarrassed. Just listen. Don't be embarrassed. We all had to grow. I didn't start off like this. We all had to grow. We all had to grow. Come on. I'm learning from, as a child, what mama taught me. Come on. Then you look back. That's why, that's why, that's, that's why children become uh, their parents' best friend when they have children. Then they begin to realize, hey, you know what? They was, they was trying to help me. They was trying to help me. See? Love. 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 God says, God says, I'm trying to love you. And you run away from me. God says, I'm, I'm trying, I come so you can have life and have it more abundantly. But you push away from me. Oh, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. He says, I love you. How much, Lord? Stretch out his hands, holes in his hands, hole in his side. Gave his life. Didn't nobody force him. His motive was right. We have nothing to offer him. Only thing we have to offer him is the things that he gave us. And all he says to us is give me back what I've given you. Give me a portion of it back. He says, I want you. Give me you. Give me you. That's what I want. And we get offended. Would a person be a friend if they saw you? Watch you tear your house down brick by brick, destroy your children little by little, destroy your marriage, and they not say anything. And you know you're doing it. And you, and you know, you know you're doing it. Are we supposed to be blind and act like we don't see? Why do you think this pulpit is elevated? Because God says that those that minister is going to be able to see further. In the book of Ezra, in the book of Nehemiah, it teaches us why this pulpit is elevated. It is a picture. It doesn't make me anything great. It just said God says, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give them greater vision to see. 
so they can help you. Help. Stand on your feet, everybody. Just stand.